Let's take a look at some physical properties of the carboxylic acid derivatives, and we'll put them in context of the carboxylic acids as well. First, we're going to look at boiling point. And when you are comparing boiling points, one thing that you do want to keep in mind if you're just looking at you know, different functional groups, you really need to be comparing things of similar molecular weight. And what we're going to be looking at are the intermolecular forces. And just for review, remember that your weakest intermolecular forces are the van der Waals, also known as London dispersion forces. Then stronger than that are the dipole-dipole interactions. And then stronger than that are the hydrogen bonding interactions. So as we have stronger intermolecular forces, then that's going to you know, hold the molecules together more in the solution, resulting in a higher boiling point. So let's look at a series of molecules here. I'm going to go ahead and list them in order of boiling point, and then we'll discuss why we have the trend that we do. Okay, so here I've listed some compounds going from an alkane to an organohalide, ester, ketone, amide, carboxylic acid, and amide with uh, hydrogen on the nitrogen. And I've, I've kind of taken some liberties here in that these all don't have um, super similar molecular weights, but we're mainly right now looking at the functional groups. But if you're comparing a couple of things with different functional groups, you do want them to have similar molecular weights to make an accurate comparison. So what we find, all of these have van der Waals forces. So that's really not going to help us break these apart. But once you go from the alkane to the organochloride, ester, and so forth, what we're ending up with and we have dipoles. So all of the rest of these have dipole-dipole interactions. So that's why these are all higher boiling than just the alkene. We're going to come back to the ester and ketone in just a minute. But next, I want to jump to the top of the list and look at the carboxylic acid and the amide. Both of these have hydrogen on the oxygen or nitrogen that can hydrogen bond. So that's why these two are at the top of the list. And in general, amides have slightly higher boiling points than carboxylic acids. You will notice this amide here, but this one does not have any hydrogen to hydrogen bond. So then the only thing that's really left out of this list um, that you might be wondering about is an alcohol. And that can vary, um, which is why I didn't exactly include it in the list, depending on uh, the structure and things like that. But in general, if you were going to look at an alcohol, usually it'll fall right here. So we'll say usually... alcohols fall in this range. So they're higher boiling than uh, ketones and esters, but usually not as high boiling as amides or carboxylic acids. So what I want to spend a little bit more time looking at is 
one that really surprises people oftentimes, the ester and the ketone. Because usually if I ask somebody which you think has the largest dipole, they'll say an ester. But that's not actually the case if we look at the structure. Ketones have a larger dipole than esters, and that's why they have higher boiling points. Let's draw these two functional groups out and take a closer look. Here's an ester. Here's a ketone. What we want to look at is both the bond dipoles and the molecular dipoles. So for the ketone, we have a bond dipole that runs through the oxygen. But also, because that's really the only primary dipole, that's also the direction of the molecular dipole and makes up most of that. So the molecular dipole points like that, and it's a fairly strong dipole, molecular dipole. In the case of the ester, we also have this dipole that runs through the carbonyl oxygen, but then you have the second oxygen, which has a bond dipole toward it, another bond dipole toward it, and along this axis, we have a dipole in the positive direction and the negative direction. And along that x-axis, those cancel out. But then in the y-axis, we have a slight directionality pointing down. What this does, this in the negative direction takes away from this dipole in the positive y direction, and the net result is a smaller molecular dipole in that direction. So that's why ketones are have a stronger molecular dipole and have a higher boiling point than esters. The other physical property we're going to look at is water solubility. And you know, this follows the general rule that we learned way back in general chemistry Like dissolves like. So what we're looking for are functional groups that have some like properties of water to aid in water solubility. So polar functional groups, uh, things with lone pairs that can hydrogen bond with water. So that's you know, what you're looking for something with a lone pair, because what that can do, even if, you know, for example, this ketone won't hydrogen bond with itself, the lone pair on the oxygen can hydrogen can bond with, um, form a hydrogen bond with the H in water, and that helps aid in its water solubility. So the general rule of thumb And this is not a black and white rule, it's very gray, but it is useful. For something to be water soluble, if you take the number of carbons, divide that by the number of hydrogen bonding capable groups, if that's less than or equal to four, the molecule's likely water soluble. So what counts as a hydrogen bonding group? Well, things we've learned before are things like ethers, amines, 
But now we are adding in the carboxylic acids and derivatives. But one thing I want you to keep in mind, even though some of these will contain you know, more than one oxygen or multiple lone pairs, we still just count these as one hydrogen bonding capable group. So let's look at a couple of examples. In this first example, what you want to do first is count the carbons. And we can do that. So in the ring, there are six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine carbons. And then our number of hydrogen bonding capable groups, we have the OH. We have this amide, which in and of itself just counts as one. The carboxylic acid, which counts as one. So we have three. Nine divided by three is three. That means there's enough polarity in this molecule to counteract the greasiness of the hydrocarbons. So this number is less than or equal to four. So we would expect this molecule to be water soluble. In the second example, let's go through again and count the carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we have 12 carbons, then our hydrogen bonding groups, we have this oxygen and the amide. Two hydrogen bonding groups, that's six. That means there's just too much hydrocarbon nature in this molecule for it to be water soluble, and we would expect this to not be water soluble. We would expect it to be soluble in an organic solvent. So something maybe like THF. One thing I'll point out, this is a case where a lot of people might make a mistake. If you were to mistakenly count this amide, as two. Sometimes people would circle the oxygen, circle the nitrogen, count that as two. So then they would do 12 divided by three and come up with four and say, oh yeah, it should be water soluble, but it's not. So the thing is, make sure you only count these carboxylic acid derivatives as one hydrogen bonding capable group.